Hello and welcome to Ask the Accountant. We have cool friends and today we have a two for the price of one, I'd like to say. A value deal. That's why I like Definitely. to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So not only do we have cool friends, but we have two of them and I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Nick, Tush, go for it. Like, you who wants to go, go first? first? Yeah. You, Tush, after you. Hey guys, um, my name's Tush Patel. Um, one of the co-founders here at KPM. Um, really looking forward to today. Um, sitting here in this nice, cool room as well. Hi, I'm, I'm Nick Cheney. Um, I've been at KPM for the past six years. My relationship with Tush has lasted longer than that. Um, but it's great to be interviewed by two familiar faces. Awesome. Hope they're kind. <laughs> <laughs> we are definitely. Always. <laughs> well, it's, the whole point is cool friends, right? So I think we definitely want to talk about you two individually in terms of how you got to where you are, career, that sort of thing. But let's, so people give a bit of an understanding what is KPM and why they should be interested in it. Uh, we'll definitely talk into more detail later down the line, but just give a like a brief overview. Of if, if you were pitching it to someone now, what is KPM? All right, you, do you want me to go ahead you're, with that? You're the founder. Um, well, no, <laughs> co-founder. Um, yeah, no, so um, the idea of KPM is it's um, it's an ecosystem with um, a cloud suite of products which are, uh, which are targeted towards accountants in practice to try and really streamline their processes and, and effectively reduce their pain barrier um, with their clients. So we provide everything from bookkeeping, payroll, final accounts, uh, taxes, tax preparation, practice management, and actually, I think we're on the cusp of releasing uh, cloud charity accounts today, Monday, something along those lines. Soon. And and a few more things over the next couple of weeks. And the idea there is whatever an accountant does, they should be able to do it and collaborate with their customers and staff directly through the platform. Love it, love it. And we're, we're users of the mm -hmm. product we itself. Are. I mean, I, I was trying to think when I started using it, it was, I mean, it's 10 years plus, but I don't know quite. Jim Fing. Yeah. I think it was back in 2014. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So, all right. Nine years, but yeah, 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 yeah. It's, Before my time. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Crazy. <laughs> I signed Darren up. I remember. It was because it wasn't, for, for anyone who know, I've got multiple accounty firms um, and it was one back then called WPC Accounting Limited. Yes, it was. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we're trying to steal a, a well prominent known uh, accounting firm. We're trying to steal their funder, but yeah, it didn't work as a, as it should have done. <laughs> anyway, back this guy is all about you guys. So right, um, we have cool friends. Why are you guys in where you are now? How did you get to the position? Give us a story. Give us the breakdown. What what's made you come to the point where you are now, where co-founder and I mean you've, you're part of the furniture, Nick. Let's yeah, be honest. Right. Let, <laughs> um, I guess. <clears throat> It's probably a bit more about going into life's experiences than really. I'm sure we're going to cover it after, but first acquisition on my first company, I sat down um, with my co-founder as well, who had actually helped me build the business up previously. And what happened was we were sitting with um, our accountant, my accountant at the time, um, and saw literally he had one thing for bookkeeping, another another thing for accounts prep, and, and let, payroll was one thing. I don't even want to get onto practice management. It, back then, it was just like an Excel. Um, if they're was, lucky. Yeah. <laughs> if not a Rolodex. <laughs> I won't name names. It was a franchise. But the idea there was it, it was, it just seemed very, very clunky. And coming from a sort of semi-tech world before, it just seemed like, what are you doing here? You were taking one thing from here and then putting it into there. And then I started to think, you're charging us all this amount of money, <laughs> right? But actually it's so archaic in the way you're doing it um and that's where our money's being spent really is your time and effort that was going through this so it was more or less just a conversation that we're having around the table and said look wouldn't it be better if you could do this directly in the cloud environment um at that point he didn't know what cloud was it was um, a fad one too totally that's what sage yeah. said yeah um, we then got onto the topic about, um, I won't go comment on that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we then got onto the topic about, um, where's my data held? I want to see it here in the office. And, and as soon as we said, well, no, it sits on a server host, hosted by XYZ. Cause at the time we didn't even have, KPM wasn't even formed. Yeah. So it was just a complete no, no. Uh, he said, I don't want it. You know, I wouldn't even think about it. You guys are crazy, et cetera, et cetera. So we then came back, I think it must have been about six months later with sort of like a, a vision and, and, and um, a prototype of what it would look like, an MVP. Um, he kind of semi-believed it, but he just, I think 
the exact words were, you're not going to get far, Sage is going to swallow it up. Yeah? And, and, and quote unquote, it was just like, they're just going to bulldoze you and then just get it done. So it wasn't the greatest of uh, confidence that I got out of it, but we just carried on. So Sanjay and I carried on. And then we went to Accountex was the first uh, 2013. And we just saw like QuickBooks, Zero, And all we had at the time was payroll and bookkeeping that was semi sort of complete. And we were like, we just can't go into the market with this. You know, um, they're doing a better job. They're bigger, faster, better and infinite amount of money okay, behind it. So then we really looked at it and said, well, actually, what we're trying to solve was not really that aspect. It was it was more for the accountant. And so where's it then drove the accounts production, then drove the tax aspects, tax preparation aspects. And then that's kind of when we were about to go into the market, got approached by um, uh, John Stockdike, it was, um, uh, uh, RIP, ble um, bless his soul, uh, who found us uh, through the big wide web and phoned us up and said, who the hell are you? Um, where have you come from? And before you know it, there was an editorial that was done about us. Oh. And, and that's kind of where the acceleration path of interest started to come from. Were we ready for it back then? I don't think we were. Uh, truth be told, but actually it helps us to sort of like push on and, 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 and sort of perfect the areas that, you know, at the time we thought um, were not working properly as well. So over that period, that would must have been 2015, I think it was, um, we started to win customers who believed in the vision of what we were doing um, and said, you know, worked with us. So it was a select group of people in London. And I think it was yourself as well, Aaron, that you know signed up at that time as well. So we worked with obviously the likes of yourselves and what have you to to see where we can progress on to next. And it was still a small team. We self invested everything up until that point. My wife wasn't happy. Um, I still think she's not happy. But um, <laughs> but the idea there was we we took it to a point before we went out to investors um, to say, look, if this isn't a product where we've got traction we put ourselves, our, our, our own personal money into it and sweat and equity into it, then I don't know what is. And, and, and that's really what drove the business forward after. I don't want to labor the point. I think there was one point in time where we were close to basically, we burnt all of our cash and we had to kind of uh, sit down, rethink our strategy. We were probably about a month away from going under. And we just kind of, there was two options, either go out and raise investment or B, just sell. Mm -hmm. And at the time it was sell on an annual basis um, instead of offering monthly aspects. Because we were signing up about 20 customers a month, roughly. And literally from March 15 to April, May, June, July, all the way through, that's the story that I told our investors who signed up at the time that we didn't have any money and this is what's got us through. Okay, just continuously selling, selling, selling. And if that's not a story to tell you around the table, I don't know what is that there's yeah. actually something there that people believe. I in. think that's really poignant in the moment because in the last year we've seen a lot of startup tech solutions in the industry run out of roadway. Yeah. Because that a lot of the time they've spent more time keeping investors happy and trying to get new investors than they actually have selling their own product. Mm. And yeah, they, you have two options: you get investors or you sell. So the fact that you guys went, well, we can do both to a degree. But the quicker cash is going to come in from the selling. The, the thing is, you never know, Johan, when you're sitting around. It, until the cash lands, Yeah. Uh, you know, at the 11th hour, somebody can still turn around and, you know, bring something up in your terms or et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Until it's landed in the bank account, you never know. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So why were we going to go down that road on the premise that, we, you know, destiny was in our own control? And so we kind of took that route that if we were going to go under, God forbid, then, you know, at least we tried, yeah, like, you yeah. know, um, fighting, really. Self-fulfilling prophecy as well, isn't it? If you can sell your product mm. and you can continue to show that it's sellable, then more investors are going to be interested, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it was the right call. Nick, what about yourself? What, what What's your story? How did you get to, uh, <laughs> um, again, part of the furniture at KPM? So I don't really have that many connections <clears throat> with accountancy apart from my mum was an accountant and that gave me a negative experience of accountancy because as you can imagine uh, the control on your pocket money was quite tight mm. <laughs> she yeah. didn't have you doing tea ledgers oh. on your own pocket money did she? <laughs> <laughs> like i remember when i went to university 
I made it abundantly clear that I wanted to disentangle from her kind of grasp because uh, she was very controlling and I get it. You know, she was a daughter of, a, of an immigrant who came over from Italy in the 1950s. So money was something that always they worked hard for. But me being third generation growing up, I wanted just to spend and live a little. So I broke away from that. But the story of how me and Tush met really comes from his first business was PPR Solutions. Um, I graduated from uni, did classic, went away traveling three, four months. Um, and I was working at Balfour Beatty for free for about six months. Um, not that exciting, but it's installation of water meters in the Southeast because it's a water stressed area. Um, <laughs> I remember it well. Uh, and then from there, I moved back to London and then someone from Tush's team reached out to me. Uh, PPR got sold after about 18 months I was there. Um, and then I went to work for a bank doing IT project management, um, but we still kept quite close contact with the guys. Um, I saw a couple of our other colleagues and I remember them in their workspace and Tush being in the corner working away on this kind of secret project. Um, again, I went traveling again. Um, I, I was kind of going through- Thailand, the, weren't you? Yeah, I did America. I did okay. as many places as possible. I think that was my kind of like, why am I working? What's, what, what am I doing? Yeah, yeah, really, yeah. you know? Um, I came back and I think I was in the UK for a few weeks. I was going for another banking job. Asked Tush for a reference and he kind of hooked me in. <laughs> um, and I haven't really looked back from there, um, you know. So fast forward nearly six and a half years, um, we find ourselves here with you guys, really. And to say it's been a journey is, is saying the least. Like we've probably had blood, sweat, tears, yeah. hugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just as much conflict as, you know, husband and wife does have. But I think we often do well, we try to do it more, just pinch ourselves a little bit to be like, we've actually got this far. Um, you know, as you were saying earlier, so many companies run out of money or yeah. a statistic that how many companies actually don't make it through their first year. And, you know, we're on the cusp of nearly 2,000 accountants using us. Um, you know, so it's, it's a great journey. And when I first started at KPM, a lot of the kind of conversations we were having was about credibility. Who are we? You know, are we viable? And that was really tough kind of to get over that initial hurdle. Um, but now it's more about, we love what you're doing. I, you know, but I need you to do more. Uh, you know, can you do more? And you know, I'm like, Tush, let me do more. <laughs> Go shake down those investors more. Um, yeah. And, you know, I think 18 months ago, I think that's where we had uh, our real first, like, major break, where we did receive some, a decent amount of investment and this is where we're on the cusp of these new product launches, which is like the beginning of, you know, a new world. Before we were fighting to exist, now we're fighting to grow. And that's a completely different challenge and obstacles um, to have. So, yeah, that's my story to date. <laughs> love it. Love it. What you guys did, if we, so 2015, right? Hmm. It's still very much out there. The same kind of landscape for accounts and tax production as it was then like you guys came along and did cloud-based accounts and tax return at a time when i think the only other player was tax filer mm. yeah like, no one else did proper cloud accounting mm. yeah i mean there was Others no claim uh, to do it whatever it was called nomi before what was it called no, no, Nomisma. 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 Yeah. no they only came in the market in the last two or three years no, they were around. Um, were they? Yeah, 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 but they didn't actually push on. Um, right. They, I think there was a um, uh, decision that was taken internally to offer it in, internally to to um, some of its current um, f uh, franchises, for for right. example. And then after that, I think they've then it opened it's, up externally. Yeah. So it's only in the last year or two, yeah. well, two or three years, to be fair to them, that I've seen them on the market again. Did, and I think they're trying, yeah. to, they're trying a bit yeah. harder. Yeah. Yeah, but like, it's always baffled me that bookkeeping has
Yeah. Oh, just, well, originally they wanted the hybrid pro- approach, didn't they? Yeah. 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 But like, no one, like you know, tax calc and stuff. They all said, "Oh, we're cloud based." It's like. N- yeah, no, you're not. You you've got a link to a server remotely. That's not. It's I want to be able to access near. you on a web browser. That's cloud based, in my opinion. But why, like Paywell as well? They were incredibly slow to go cloud based. And it's only in the last three years that we've seen a big push towards cloud. Mm. And some of them pulled it back, haven't they? Yeah, and it's not gone well for some of the yeah, biggest yeah, yeah. names in the market. But why am I completely simplifying oversimplifying this by saying? Why is it so much more difficult to do accounts and tax production on a web browser in the true cloud than on a bit of software on my laptop? It's, do you know what? Firstly, it really bugs me. Um, and we're in a cool friend's room, so I can say it. <laughs> when it's a hybrid platform, but it's called cloud. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, so I've put that out there. It's Friday and it's Friday fun. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, um, but on the flip side, it's 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 not difficult. Well, it is difficult clearly because we're we're blood, sweat, and tears, as Nick yeah. says. But I can understand and I can empathise with a lot of the big players in the market where you've built up um, a community on a architecture, right? Which effectively you've now built. You started on a bungalow, for example, and then now you've got an extension on top, and now you've basically gone wider, etc. And so you've created a mansion, and now you've got fifty thousand people living in it. Okay trying to rehouse them in the same environment that they've been used to yeah. for so long with features that potentially they may not have that they've been used to and accustomed to for the last 20 years, for example, that scares people. Yeah. That, that can scare people yeah, yeah. Um, as a vendor. So I get it. And I suppose we were fortunate enough where, yes, we were a new player, so we didn't have any legacy historic yeah. issues in order to do that. Do we face that now? I think with our new environment coming out, uh, you know, you, uh, Aaron, I know you've been yep. sort of part of that with the charities aspect, but then we're doing it with the bookkeeping. And those are the kind of questions and, um, you know, uh, permutations that we start thinking about is how are we going to do it without affecting or upsetting our current customer base, for example. So I, I, I do empathize with with uh, with the larger vendors out there with regards to doing it. Um, so go, hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, no. It- <laughs> Uh, it's obviously not as simple as we thought it was, but no. it's just frustrating when they, as you say, yeah. the hybrid approach gets branded as cloud. I mean, we've seen two big shifts in it, haven't we, into lately. We've had a legacy product, BTC, decide to go cloud. My opinion, I feel like they've just gone, well, everyone loved our, so- our software on, on desktop. Let's just replicate it. And all that's doing is ba- is basically alienating anyone who didn't like the software that was on there. And then you've got people like QuickBooks going, right, let's just put on zero, just build a new one. Obviously, nowhere near the complexity that you guys built almost 10 years ago now, right? Mm. And it just seems like it's really difficult for them to find that right niche, that right the yeah. right approach to it. Either they're trying to replicate something that was already outdated or they're trying to build something and then realizing how complicated it is and just not giving the features that we need to serve our, service so think, our clients. Yeah, the tough thing comes from delivering the product, right? If you have a customer base that expects a certain spectrum of features, but you're going to try and deliver the product in iterations, when do you expose your customer base to that initial product? Because the first thing the, pro- the customers will say is, it doesn't do this. It's yeah. not like that. This is missing. And I think, where do you begin? You know, I think some of these legacy platforms are releasing products that just have their MVPs, you know. But then from what I hear, that's just alienating their customers mm-hmm. because it's missing the extra bits, the fluffy bits that they like or they got yeah. accustomed to. Or they need to provide the service. Yeah, correct, right, which mm. they built into their own internal process. What what we're what we've I think we've been able to do is we had that bedrock and we're able to add and add and add and we're already in the cloud. But I'd like to go back to one of your earlier points where you said Sage was saying it's a fad. When I first started, I think all major vendors were ignoring cloud. It was, mm-hmm. you know, cloud was just like, huh, you know? And I think that's because they obviously had their customers who had their revenue stream. If it's not broken, you know, why fix it? Yep. But then obviously the pandemic, I think, has significantly changed that. The 
resource issue that accountants are having with hiring staff and the flexibility and remote working and the work-life balance, which is becoming even more important, mm. I think it's all turbocharged a trend that was slowly coming in anyway. Yeah. And I think this is why people are taking cloud more seriously. And yeah, I think I think just to touch on that, I mean, I did a webinar, like you know, um, earlier this week on it. But you can't build if we're talking about things like machine learning and AI. Okay, yes, you know, depending on who you speak to, you're going to get a different response back. And you know, is, we're, we're either in Terminator land or at the end of the day, it could be happening right now at some point. You can't do that on a desktop environment. Um, and and so really now, if we're looking at the evolution of tech going forward, you've got no choice, which is why I think most vendors are now starting to kind of like get, well, every vendor's getting into it to obviously try and get to that point because at some point you're going to have to be looking at introducing maybe not GPT, but something else, mm -hmm. okay, something AI related and, and, and machine learning within within to the platform because that's what... What are your thoughts on AI and... KPM's future with AI and stuff is that something you guys have started talking about and looking at? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think the the, the whole point with that is, um, in order for us to offer it out to other people, we need to look at where we see pain points ourselves internally. Yeah. yeah. If we can solve the pain points internally with ourselves, then actually we can say, okay, look, we've done that and we know it works. Here you go, guys. Um, that yeah. that that that's probably worth considering. So the areas that we're looking at, Nick knows like, every day. I'm looking at our uh, chatbot facilities, um, seeing how we can look at support, not to basically replace, but it's to-, to Enhance, to, it, it? Yeah, yeah, exactly that. So it's a case of, okay, the answers are not coming back. Okay, where are they pulling the answers from? Where is it pulling the answers from? We need to look at how we can actually enhance that and mm -hmm. actually better that. Because from your world, the way I look at it is each department is is like um, an extension of your body, so it's 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 like um, an organ, not an organ, but um, a limb, a, a limb. Yeah. yeah, thanks. So, if you've got all the limbs, learning how to go left to right, back to front, right side to side, etc. Whether or not it then sits as AI making that decision, I don't think we're there, and I don't think we will be there for a long time. We don't know where that ball is going to bounce next, but. The idea there is that is the accountant in my world, uh, personally, where that's the decision maker. But the rest of it is, you know, all those mundane tasks, all of that, that should be, you know, um, pretty much automated as much as possible. I love it. And I think you guys have got a competitive advantage when it comes to AI, because one of the things we keep coming back to is conversation topic time and time again with AI. And yes, we're getting to see some really clever vendors out there do something a little bit different with AI, maybe do this, maybe do that. But the problem is, for vast majority of vendors out there, they can only apply AI to that small section, mm. whatever that section is that they, they're doing, proposals or whatever it's going to be. With you guys, though, because you offer an ecosystem and you, you have the whole ecosystem there, then that's where, for me, AI is going to be far more impactful when it knows all the different, like you, that, that analogy of limbs, yeah? yeah? So if the AI knows and can talk to all of them, then it's going to be able to offer much more in terms of actual real life impressions and give us actual stuff we can actually, as, a, as accountants, run with and actually help ultimately serve our clients better. Mm. Um, and I feel like that's where you guys have that competitive advantage, whereas most other solutions out there, they're going to struggle to... Yeah. Deliver a huge value. Exactly. There'll be a buzzword for it, and yeah. they'll, they'll be able to show this and that, but it, AI it can only go so Email far. generation. It's like, that's great, but I've still got to sit there and proofread it. So I may as well have typed it as I proofread it. Yeah. And But in theory, you guys could go, right, well, let's generate an email that's spoken to, to the accounts production, spoken to the corporation tax module, spoken to this, and whatever you want to do with it, it's done something with it, right? And it's got that whole thing. And I feel like... That's going to be huge, you know. Hopefully, AI is not the 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 faff go uh, the. Um... No, but if it could be like an a like the accounts are sit, like, you know, like back when we had Microsoft's bloody clippy thing, <laughs> like, and it goes, oh, it looks like you're writing a letter. Yeah. So, yes, well done, mate. <laughs> but like, if it, if you had that in uh, accounts and tax production, and it can go, you've not. 
you change you know it looks like you're applying this depreciation pre last year you applied this percentage or you've not included like i know your guys software already flags like you've got this in but you've not put a note in about yeah. this area relations and warnings like, is correct yeah. if the ai is there to enhance that feature mm. i can see a huge use for it yeah, yeah. That, that it's funny you say that because i guess really data for ai is like fuel to a fire mm. Mm. so it needs as much data as possible in order to make sure it gets it right yeah now how can you now turn around and ensure that that data is correct when we're having continuous compliance changes that are being pushed through yep. by budgets brexits yep. Yep. elections about to come up it's going to throw off the data that we're putting in so unless the data is actually pure accurate etc yeah but i think i think one of the areas that we're going to probably struggle with is accounts production and tax um just primarily because those are where the budget changes continuously always happen um yeah Having said that, the other areas where they're more mundane tasks, I guess really just the, the receipts, et cetera, blah, 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 transactions, journal entries, et cetera. I think that, 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 that's a given. I think that's going to happen, or is happening anyway. The compliance side is going to be an interesting one and a compelling one going forward, whoever cracks it, hopefully us. Yeah, <laughs> well, you're right. Aren't you? like, so chat GPT goes to what, September 2022 at the moment? Was it yeah. 21, 22? Now, in my mind of miracles that means at the end of this year end of this september does that mean chat gpt can go up to the end of september 2023 because we're now on 2024 and you know what i mean it like, depends what you're paying for yeah well it does yeah <laughs> but like the the fact that it, whatever your ai suggests as tax codes tax calculations etc you've got to have a hundred percent confidence that it's recommend it's basing it on the right years history yeah. and you've got to put those reassurances in for yourselves before you can roll it out to the client yeah so that the client can just go yeah that if kpm's telling me this was the tax allowance and this was the way to treat this certain aspect in that year and i'm doing a tax return from three years ago because the client's been a bit useless and they've only just realized oh maybe i should have done a tax return then you know it is a great research tool mm, in chat gpt and if that can be harnessed in kpm then brilliant. But as you say, you've got to have the confidence that it's right. Mm. Uh, and you know, you guys checking your product, like, right, if, if Johan goes in and selects 20 to, 2020 to 21 as a tax return, like you can just go, yeah, these are the tax brackets. They match what was on HMRC's website, fine. Mm. But if you're going to start powering that with more clever things from AI, then obviously it increases the risk of mistakes. Yeah. It raises a point about what about your PI? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> if you're using GPT and AI to actually sort of like create your tax returns for your client, yeah. how does that sit with your insurance policies? Yeah. And our um, professional bodies as well. They're already yeah. really worried about it. And yeah. They can continue, yeah. right? Mm. I just think a lot of it isn't, it's like the theoretical at the moment. Oh, it's, you know, which, which level it's all are accountants happy to let AI mm -hmm. take control of their day to day processes? And I think that's half the battle, really. We could have one idea where we think AI could be useful, but an accountant might actually think that's giving away too much of my value or mm -hmm. what I am and what I've trained to do. So I think it's just kind of thrashing out that balance. And I think there's going to be lots of wrong turns, I think, until there's a product that works. Because for the email aspects you were highlighting earlier, I think that's a bit of a waste of AI. You know? It's a bit of a novelty, isn't it? Yeah, that everyone's it's, gone... We could put that in product today and be seen as responding and reacting to the market and yeah. the tech and be thought leaders. It's like, well, you, you're not really. I mean, so don't worry, I've used chat GPT to write template emails. Like, I wouldn't ever use it to write a response to a client's email. But if I've got, like, a, in my software, it's like we've got a, a template that goes out with every set of accounts, I'll go to chat GP. Like, I'm dyslexic, so chat GPT, can you write a, an email? Inform the client that these are their accounts. This is the deadline. Um, you know, put placeholders here for this, 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 and this. And it comes out with a better worded email that I can copy and paste into the software as a template mm. than I would ever write. Mm. And the reaction, the responses we get from those templates is that people nine out of ten times haven't realised that was a template. Yeah, they've gone, they've kind of felt that I 
one of us had written that email exactly. bespoke for that it, person. Yeah. And it's like, there's value to be had there because the amount of temp- automated t- emails that look automated, blatantly, obviously, yeah. templated, it's crap. Mm. So there is a use there. Yeah. But I think there's a lot of hype yeah. around a very novel feature. And the yeah. real value is going to be when it hits bookkeeping, payroll, accounts, tax, etc. I think, look, this is going to throw it way out as well. We're, you know, just even just having this conversation um, about it. There's that whole piece about right now is categorized as deep fake. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so we can take Aaron, okay, who can sit as the virtual person having meetings and annotations and all of that, meetings that are being annotated and all of a sudden just taken behind the scenes and put straight into the file against that particular client. Now, it's picked up your voice, it's picked up what you look like, okay. Why is it that then, you know, it cannot act as you going forward and you've got a thousand errands for a thousand customers? Yeah. You know, like, so yeah. we're way off that, don't get me wrong, but it's 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 a case that... It's a potential, though. It's a mm. potential. Um, and it is Friday afternoon, so that's why I just chucked it out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think, let's just go back to kind of the strengths of KPM and what... Yeah. what the reason why you know people like let's myself talk about what it is now rather than what yeah, we might yeah, get yeah. in the future with AI. <laughs> so the reason people like myself have stayed around so long, and, I, and especially that I think there was one significant change. I'd love to get your thoughts of why you made that change and why it's there. Because if we look at competitors, there's some competitors that are a complete closed shop. That's they've built this ecosystem, and you use this ecosystem, you like it or not. Yeah, I mean, at one point, CCH were so insistent that you had to use the twin field and. Iris was pushing cash flow and it was like, if you want to use our software, then you've got to use the whole ecosystem or or not sort of thing. And I feel like the big strength for you guys, and I've said this story a lot of times, is the fact that I, I was I was asked to do a bit of um, consultation for a friend of ours who was going through some problems in the practice and they were using a competitive solution and they were budgeting like 14 hour to do this particular job. And if I took that same job, that same type of client and everything else and I applied using KPM and using the software, the other software we use, it was more of a six to eight hours at a push job. And that's because of the efficiencies you guys bring and allowing the fact that it can talk to outside the ecosystem. So it can talk to you, as we now have to call them, FMSs. You know? Yes, your finance management software. <laughs> I'm not sure that should t- catch on, but anyway. So you can talk to other fan, uh, FMSs, you can bring that data in and you can do it. And, I remember you releasing that 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 particular piece of solution, and it, maybe it was because people like myself were banging on the door asking for it, whatever it was. But if you looked at your model, realistically, you shouldn't have allowed anyone else in. Like that's that almost seems daft, right? Why would you want not people not using your bookkeeping software? Yeah, but you did, and that's where the big efficiencies have come. That's where you know, people like myself can shout about it and give those success stories and everything else. So from your point of view, how did that conversation, because was there, was there a pushback at first? Was there a, why are we building a solution to push to others? Or was it a case of going, you know what, enough people have asked for this, the community wants this, let's bring it in. I think it was, and there was, an, was there like an assessment that you could open you up to a wider market? And I think, firstly, you've got to pick your fights, mm-hmm. um, you know, and I think, as Tush was saying that, you know, when he first came to Accountex and he just had his the bookkeeping and payroll solution, he was like, the vendors we were up against, you know, he, you, didn't, you didn't see it taking off. And I think as, as time went on, I think we realised what our strengths are, you know, what our weaknesses are. And what changed was, I think, how we proposition our products, you know, and the acceptance of, okay, our bookkeeping will never go toe-to-toe with QuickBooks or Zero at the moment. Maybe soon it will. <laughs> um, watch this space. <laughs> but, you know, but then there's such a big user requirement and the necessity for bookkeeping, okay, to get that to use other products. So if we became a closed shop, it would just harm us, mm. you know. And recently we've done the free agent integration um, we are going to do Sage next as well because we 
understand that you guys might use QuickBooks. You might also use Zero. Mm -hmm. You might use Sage. There could be four or five different bookkeeping providers that you use. And your clients might determine which bookkeeping well, software they you use. Well, they use. do. That's yeah. the point. Yeah. Regardless. So we can't then, if we go, actually, guys, you've got to use bookkeeping. Before you even consider the rest of the ecosystem, we've actually created a blocker for you to use our product. Yep. You know? So I think that's was kind of the logic. Yeah, and the process. I, no, I agree. I agree with Nick. It, it was a, it was so many weeks, months, years. We've heard the same thing coming back, and after a while, it was just a case of, well, would be stupid not to at the moment. And actually, you can take that and and refocus your efforts and and use it as um, as motivation to say, well, we need to improve ours. So mm -hmm. so you know we're going through that. You know you'll see you start seeing things coming out very shortly but it shouldn't have stopped you guys. So that gateway needed to be unlocked um, to, to, to allow you. Because we saw many people were using the bookkeeping, but it was for the lower level, ris less riskier clients. You're never going to turn around and stop your customers from using whatever they wanted to do. But actually, if we stick to the mantra of what we started KPM about to make your lives easier, mm. that wasn't making it easier. Yeah. So that think, was the main reason. Yeah, the way we proposition our bookkeeping now to, to people who are joining us who have used us is it, it's a viable alternative. You know, in, in the, the, well, the environment or the world where people's prices for bookkeeping is going up every three months now, to have a free viable alternative where your clients can access a cloud-based product, okay, and just do anything, you know, no disrespect, but a basic client, you just need to raise invoices, purchase orders, you know, record some transactions. That's a perfect tool, you know, and MTD, MTD it's is not far away. You're going to need to get, you know, transactions or recording that data in a product somehow. Yeah. You're going to get kicked back from lots of people. Well, they're going to say, well, actually, not only am I as an accountant potentially going to have to charge you more because there's quarterly reporting and additional work, but on top of that, you're going to have to pay an extra 20, 25 pounds, 30 pounds a month for bookkeeping software. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually what was become a bit of our weakness, become, it's become a bit of a strength. You know, we're finding people who's just like, well, actually, the people who want to use Zero QuickBooks and the likes can. But I have, a, I have 20, 30 clients who don't use any software. Yeah. And this is yeah, better yeah. than <laughs> not using any yeah. software yeah, yeah, yeah. at the end of the and day. And compliant. And it pulls through. Yeah. You know, then you have the benefits of the integration into the other products. So actually, we're solving problems. And this is becoming, these problems are actually getting bigger for people because of mandated change of, by the government. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, you know, we've spoke, Aaron, Johan, we, we know where our shortfalls are. And if only our pockets were as deep as some of our competitors, you know, I'm sure that bookkeeping product would be a lot stronger. But what it has given us is that clearer vision of, okay, for us to take the next step, we know what we have to do, mm -hmm. um, you know, and how we need to fix it. But at the same time, when, you know, you're a company with our ambitions and our size, you've got to know what you're good at and what you're yeah. not good at. Got to be self-aware. Pick your fights. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So for me, um, one of the, I wouldn't say confusing, but one of the things that I've maybe had mixed messages is for you guys, if you were going to put a, you were just going to paint a picture of your ideal accounting firm that you want to get KPM into, or, or maybe it's easier to say what your ideal competitor is in terms of the other vendors out there. Where do you position yourself? Because outside looking in, I see best in class cloud-based accounts production software that's what i see you know which then offers a tax compliance and it's got a, a fine payroll solution with no issues with it whatsoever okay like you said the bookkeeping needs work but that's there as well you know you're offering this whole solution but where do you see it because for me that is a startup accountant's dream almost like you've got this software they can just get off to the ground they've got you know, the opportunity to build or are you, you know, do you position yourself as the iris replacement or whatever? Where, where do you see yourself? I think initially in our journey, that's exactly, you know, our product was for is an accountant who is perfect for SMEs, you know, yeah. small businesses. Yeah. But our problem was 
we were then being put in the same bracket as tax filer. And if you put in the same bracket of tax filer, where they can do oh, 25 pounds a month or X amount of clients, for us to build and scale a business, very difficult. Yeah. Very, very difficult. But not, but almost where our kind of, our ideal customer has changed from is the feedback, what we've got from customers. And I want us to be a suitable tool for, you know, accountants who are just starting up. And we have many people who have started as a small firm and has grown with us. And that's great. Mm. Yeah. You know, but also our next stage of our journey is to be like, well, actually, if you're a medium sized firm, you can do that through KPM as well. You've got the tools and the products. So to answer your question, we're greedy. <laughs> you know, we want multiple profiles yeah, yeah. to find what they want from us. Our aspiration is to be more viable for larger firms, but that comes with more requirements and features and development. And that's where we're slowly weaving towards. Yeah. And as Tush highlighted, charity accounts is coming out, I hope, on Tuesday. Um, you know, and... We've had so many conversations, I have personally had so many conversations with accountants go, you're a full suite solution, great. But that's almost be a bit of our, bit of our undoing yeah. because you're a full suite, but you don't have charity accounts. Yeah. But you don't have time and fees. And so these have become actually, well, we're 95% there to be the perfect solution for that firm. But there's these two key ingredients that accountants have or that account firm, accountancy firms have. And I think as you move to the accountant who has maybe two, 300 clients, they probably have a dozen or so of these niche different clients that you've got to actually, as a software vendor, provide a service for. And that's where we are of yeah. the challenge that we're trying to get to. Yeah, um, totally agree. Every software has got it's a, a, uh, what I'd probably consider like an Achilles heel. Um, you know, we, we initially started for part-time sole practitioner accountants. And, and, you know, as I've said before, those are the guys who have helped us to get to where we have, okay? We could not have done it without them. But in doing so, what we've also picked up along the way and attracted attention from are, let's say, the, the two partner firms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then from the two partner firms, then we've gone to the three or four partner firms. And now we're starting to see the attraction from the 10 partner firms, for example. And and that's basically the gradual evolution of, of the platform to go there. So yes, we have always pain points. Yes, we're always arguing in, in internally about what we need to do and bring out. But actually those discussions are healthy and those discussions are now not about, oh, we need to bring out a journal entry feature or something. Now it's about bringing out a new module to keep to, yeah. to cater for a larger yeah. firm. Um, and that's what keeps exciting. That's what wakes you out of bed in the morning as well. Definitely. Question for you, because you are an ecosystem, which make, translates into a broad shop. That's a lot of different modules. You're going to have to develop, yeah. maintain, and yeah. continue to develop. Do you feel you might have had an easier and a deeper penetration into the market if you just stuck with accounts and tax and just made that best in class. Well, it's, always a, it's always a question, isn't it? We hear yeah. best in class or an ecosystem, which yeah. one's best? Would our lives be easier? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, you know, but I think when you have a vision for a company, you've got to put your f flag to a mast, right? Oh, yeah. and, and stand for something and, you know, I think in those opening calls that I have, uh, my team has with customers, it's it's the same pain point Tush mentioned about multiple, pla you yeah. know, that is still and a problem that needs to be solved. I'm not saying that best in class is the right direction because you could have, if, if we look at someone that's best in class, zero in QuickBooks, best in class for bookkeeping, right? Yep. Try and what, what, then they've got to the point where right, bookkeeping is nailed for the most part. Mm. Where do you go next? Right, well, let's go do payroll or let's go do accounts production. Mm -hmm. or and they get nothing but grief for it because what they're doing is nowhere near best in class, yet we've come to expect best in class from what they're doing. And so we assume that the next part of their module is going to be best in class. And I think you're absolutely right. You know, looking back at it, 
if we had stuck with with that mantra, then actually of just sticking with best in class and going to council production, corp tax, for example, that kind of defeats what we said from the start of yeah. we want to simplify the accountant's life, okay, um, and provide everything within yeah. an ecosystem. Okay, fine. We could have turned around and said this is what we're looking at doing, yeah. etc. Et APIs would help slightly, yeah. but yeah. It's still not the. But actually, looking back now, the amount of effort that we've taken and sweat and investment, etc., to get to where we have. Okay, you know, and I have to mention here, we've leveraged upon an India team, which we've, we've, we, you know, which we own, we created. We had to go through an absolute amount of pain yeah, to create the company okay. in the first place, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and create and hire and the culture there. And so we just talk about the UK, but there's a whole different department and you know an entity over there. The only reason and way that we could have done this was because we've got and we leveraged upon um, our India team um, in order to be able to do this because there's no way we could have offered it out um, halfway of what we can or, for example, the amount of people that we have in our India team, there's yeah. no way we could have that in the UK yeah. to build out what we, yeah, yeah, yeah. What we have. They're yeah. the unsung heroes, really, you know, the backbone of, of what KPM does. Um, and it's something that yeah, we're proud of, you know, um, it's it's a, it's fun. <laughs> I've got a team in Sri Lanka, mm. and they are phenomenal. I could not deliver the level of client service and the broad range of services that we deliver if it wasn't for that team in Sri Lanka. Mm. They are absolutely phenomenal, and we're very proud to have them as part of our bigger team. Like, there's no them and us or anything like that. Like, they're all involved in the team meetings on Zoom. Like, all of my team work from home anyway, so it's no different. It, like you just ignore the postcode. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I do feel like in the last five to ten years, those perceptions are slowly changing. Yeah, like I think when I started, outsourcing was a bit, still a bit of a dirty work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now you know you you only have to go to Aweb, for example. Everyone's extolling mm -hmm. the values of outsourcing as a solution, and <sighs> to certain problems, like you know, so. I think, as Tush rightly said, it's what has enabled us to get this far. And it, it's what's going to enable us to continue to punch above our weight going into the future. And, you know, us having our UK head office and those guys, you know, I think so you ask, are we going to be an alternative to Iris? Give us time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. because... Iris so, have had a long time to get to where they are. <laughs> but it didn't happen overnight. But there's a big pool of dissatisfied Iris customers. Yeah, like, I doubt you know, God knows how many. And it's funny because those are the conversations that are actually inspiring us yep. to take on more, to do more. Because, you know, I think their complacency enabled people like KPM to get a foothold in the market. But if it wasn't for the likes of what they had pioneered, let's say, you know, the vision might not necessarily be there. We we, okay. we also look at that from, from, from an angle where, okay, what have they done right and etc and i can empathize because that's 30 years of effort and yeah. more than that yeah that they've built upon and we're trying to obviously expedite that as quickly as possible yeah, within yeah, a yeah. cloud-based environment you know um it's hard so speaking of future and tech and stuff like you've said you've got your uh roadmap you've got charity accounts coming out which i think nick you mentioned to aaron and i account text london was coming out this year and there we go Within a couple of days of recording this, it'll be out hopefully for you. It's, um, yeah, it's something that I'm really excited about. I shouldn't be, <laughs> but, no, but I am. But you say you shouldn't be, but then when I look at your online cloud-based competitors, so I do not believe Nomi do charity no, accounts. They don't. No, they don't. Tax file have never touched them. No. Like it, it is an underserved area, especially cloud. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I think that one of the it's one of these things when you have a monkey in your back, and you have it for such a long time, and you're on the like the precipice of kind of getting off. That's the really exciting thing. But in our charities accounts, and something you'll be pleased about, Aaron, is it's not only just charity accounts, but it's also the future of of what KPM is gonna is mm -hmm. gonna be. Like you guys speak highly of our accounts production product, and I'm grateful for that. But one of the f feedback I have is the limitations of it has for formatting and customizing mm -hmm. accounts. You know, the charity account is going to be fully customizable, where you can 
make a purple table if you want for certain things like yeah. you know borders headers everything that's going to be up to you as the accountant and that's like the future of our accounts production product so not only is it solving the charities problem but for me it's hopefully we can give to the community an insight into for us this is our next step this is kind of a beta towards yeah. what we're rolling out for Correct. everything Love it. that's yeah, incredible yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. um okay is there anything else any other big releases this year I say this year. I mean, we're in September. Christmas is about. <laughs> if you speak, if you said no, I wouldn't be surprised. If you speak to Sanjay, uh, our co-founder. He's what he, he pretty much said to us. <sighs> Again, it's no. It's going to come out anyway, so it's not an issue. Um, time and fees is out. If he had it his way, it'd be out now as well at the same time. Yeah. But the and after that, bookkeeping is about to come out. Um, followed by was he say corp tax at some point next month or one well, month after. The market's not ready for everything in one go. Yeah, no. Yeah. And your marketing team's not ready either. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So and also we need to give it time to for the for the product team to not only obviously test it, build out the literature and everything else behind yeah. it. Train your support team to be able to support exactly. it. It's, exactly. Yeah. But to answer your question, Johan, everything that you see right now is also going through a brand new whole new language. Um re, it's all been redeveloped as well yeah. in the process. So um, and the idea is we've taken feedback, we've applied it. I always think that kind of development's unsung, mm. like, mm. and it's undervalued. Like people are like, I know, it's, oh, it's, you, it's you've re, believe you've, me, it's cost you've redone the UI. It's like, and what? It's like, you know, everyone sings about new features and, and stuff. But actually, if it, by doing that UI, you save me fifteen minutes on every set of accounts we do. Mm. That soon value. adds up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's more value than you launching a tool that I might use for 10 clients in the form of charity accounts, for example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So actually the UI is, or you know, the new languages and stuff, that's equally, if not so, more so important. Yeah, and I, it, the idea behind that was we have looking at, going back to the question about machine learning, all of that, we built obviously everything that we've had so far. Cloud has obviously got its own its sort of infancy and everything mm -hmm. else, and, you know, it's... What we built on before is no longer relevant going forward yeah, yeah. at some point yeah, yeah. as well. So we've had to look at that and, and with the idea that machine learning needs to look at coming into it as well in the future. It. So before the session started recording, we were chatting about HMRC. Mm. You guys aren't a big, you've said it yourselves, you're not a big company. You've not got limitless pockets. You're not Sage printing its own money, basically, in medium enterprise. You're not QuickBooks in the US printing your own money. Like... You've got limited finite resources. Tell me to sod off, but how hard did it hit you when HMRC said we're delaying for three or four years for it to? The hardest thing for me is communicating to our customers why we haven't delivered a certain feature. When, you know, Aaron, for example, saying, Nick, I need this. I'm like, actually, we're going to work on MTD. It's our, we're focusing on this, yeah. developing. I can't remember how many sessions I've had with our customers showcasing our, M our initial MTD, it's a product, yeah. getting their approval, trying to get through that, putting my time to get people to sign up to the project. And it's more, the biggest frustration is what have we lost, not in MTD, it's a revenue in itself, because that's one issue. Yeah. But what have we lost with our product? Yeah, and, exactly. You know, the yeah. other features. You didn't have and, that focus. What else, where could you be today, I suppose? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's probably the best part of a year. Um, in you know that we've we've gone okay it's definitely coming out let's double down on it let's invest let's be proactive let's engage we dropped a lot of stuff primarily just to make sure yeah. we, we, we we were in that and game it is an investment and you had no choice as well because if you had, if, if you had a launch if, yeah. or if MTD launched without and yeah. you didn't have thing then we're, we're you'd just, yeah. yeah it's hemorrhage so, clients obviously there's time and emotion invested and you've put other features off as a financial investment as you've made reference to do you guys feel that that financial investment it's not going to deliver its return quite as quickly as originally expected because of the delay but is that financial investment still safe from the point and what hmrc are wanting to deliver in the future i mean it's not a wasted investment for you guys you're not going to have to kind of reinvest all over again or is it completely wasted and you've got to start again because of what hate? Like, I think it's really underestimated how damaging 
Like there's accountants and bookkeepers out there cheering that MTDX has been delayed. Yeah. There's software companies out there that are it's like, oh, we just put all this time and money in, like the big boys, but it's, it's not going to hit their bottom line. Mm. But for software companies like yourselves, mm. we've seen software companies go bust because of its, its mm. decision on ITSA. We've seen redundancies. Yeah. If you had asked me that question five years ago, six years ago, it could have crippled us. Okay. Um, You know, and it's only because obviously, you know, we've built up a data, um, sort of like a community and revenue lines, okay, which allow us to say, okay, fine. It's hurt and it's really left a dent, but, okay, we can survive this and go through, okay. I suppose that's, you've got to be thankful for it. Again, it, it kind of, is a testament of where we've come to mm. as well. But having said that, I think, I don't want to lose tangent here on this, but it's it's it could have gone completely the other way and it could have had a massive impact on us. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it, we could have just gone under. And I think there are certain companies out there, not naming names, but you probably actually deal with certain software companies yourselves where if something like that happened with certain revenue lines as, uh, to levels that we have, if something like this happened, they would have gone under. They would have been yeah. gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we've seen it. We've seen people like Coconut and stuff that were banking everything on Ips- Itza, and it's gone terribly wrong for them. I mean, so that investment of product development and kind of the products that you were getting ready, are they going to be? Are they still viable under the new plans, or are you have to basically? Write that off and start from scratch. I think this is probably think... our third iteration. Yeah, of MTD. It's a product. Really? Because, because of changing requirements from HMRC. Yeah, APIs. And APIs also, changing. where our product is as well, because mm. where our what the the product and the environment we would have built it in eighteen months ago is different to what we're going to build it in now. So we've yeah. also got to start from scratch. But if I go back a step about uh, the making tax digital program in its entirety. It's also been a bit of a blessing for us. Yeah. I think the digitalization of tax has helped KPM. Um, you know, <laughs> in in a weird way, you know. But I, I suppose said, it's forced those people that are on spreadsheets and paper ledgers to actually adopt software. And when you can come in and be a ecosystem competitively priced, that as you've said so far in this recording, like, you know, it's not necessarily right for everyone, but for those who it's right for it's mm. right, mm. then maybe it's forced them to look at solutions like yourself I think, earlier than perhaps they might have. I think first time we went to Accountex, there's a story here. We had a little small stand, you know, like just like one of those cubicles areas and had a banner in the background. People were coming up to us, leads, and it was like, who are you? Okay, what do you do? And we were explaining this. And then we got to the question about where's my data held? Remember going back to that yeah. same yeah. thing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, same answer. Oh, you guys, are, you guys won't be around, okay? You, you know, the same thing. The same people, I can still picture their faces right now, okay? The following year would come back. Oh, you're still here? Uh, you know, that, that's not nice to hear as a startup yeah, at the time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. And, and, and... We're a cynical <laughs> bunch. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's brutal. Um, but then it was just a case of, yeah, okay, all right, tell me more, okay? By the third year, I think MTD was just announced. Right. Okay, and it became sort of a case that it was going to be mandated um, within a few years after that. The whole narrative completely changed where I need KPM, I need KPM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, but if you sat them down and said, what do you need KPM for? What, it's a, I need cloud, I need cloud. They still didn't understand exactly what cloud was and what it does and how it can affect, uh, how it can uh, enable them in the future. But they yeah. just knew that was a tick box they had to have. So to digit- make, yeah. Yeah. digitalization of taxes by yeah. MT, yeah. by HMRC yeah. did help us massively. I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah. It you know it drove the narrative forward um, through the industry that actually we need to look at mm. this going forward. Can I ask a question about because um, we we were we we've had this exact conversation with a previous guest today of what a countex is now. Like we don't go in suits. We don't walk around in like. But back then, what yeah. was the landscape then? So was it 2013, did you say, was it? That was 14. 14. Yeah. What yeah. was the landscape then? Was it as, was it as big as then? Compared to this year. Other than yeah, the fact no, you guys just... had a huge stand this year and you were like with the big boys. What do you think? You try. 
Because um, even you guys don't, don't turn up in suits, do you? Now you, you've no. got that amazing um, football. Oh, I, really love that. I was thinking of wearing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a bit too hot outside. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but that's not a typical accountant, right? The no. the landscapes change, and just even the the way we dress and everything else. But what was it back then? What was it like? Was it suits and ties? What was it like? From accountants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a hell of a lot more suits and ties walking in. Still what do you think of like when you now stand there and look around the context this year, next yeah. year, and stuff, and you look around? What are your thoughts? Do you think it's come along the right way? It's going in the right direction? Do you think it's a better community? Do you think or do you prefer it back then? So or did you prefer them in suits and grumpy? <laughs> two observations. I remember when I first went, I saw tax calc, and they were suited and booted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I was just like, wow, you know, we are a reflection of our, our culture. We're casual, but we work very hard and dedicated. You know, I don't think how you dress or look yeah. de should determine that, you yeah. know? Um, so that was funny. Then the second one was... I'm not going to mention who, but they had a red shirt on. And it was like, don't worry, cloud's coming soon. Yeah. And they were literally a huge company. Yeah. And for me, that it was just almost like a, a big glass of confidence to be like, so before you were belittling it, you know, and now it's just like, you're trying to reassure your audience and your customers that it's coming. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, so that, those are positive. But context now, I think with digital accounts you show on the horizon, like, it's such a contrast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, a digital accounts you show is more uh, an event, an experience, mm -hmm. you know, and I think it's making, maybe bringing some much needed limelight to, you know, the accounting industry. Whereas the context is now just becoming a little bit more. It's, it is, well, it is, I don't think it's changed. It's a showcase, though. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. but if you had asked, to come to this podcast, for example, which probably wouldn't have even existed back in 2014, mm, mm. and we were here today, would I think about coming in a shirt and a tie or trousers? Yes, probably I would have. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Even though I was totally, totally against and you'd it. you'd expect us to be it as well. You, well I would have expected, yeah, 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 yeah. expected yeah. you to have worn them, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and again, tell us to do one if you want to, but one of your closest competitors has had a recent uh, name change, a recent brand change, a recent... Neon. Yeah. <laughs> Neon colours. What was your opinion on that when you first saw it? Because we, we were taken back. I mean... The... Maybe Tush can't say too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but I will. Look, I think, as Tush highlighted before in our journey, um, when I think we had our first investment round, we went in on marketing you know, and we learned some lessons from it. And I think this time round, it's all gone into our product. You know, marketing will give you maybe one bright summer, you yeah. know, yeah. Um, but it won't lay the pipelines or the, or the foundations for a viable long-term business. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the fundamentals or maybe that product hasn't changed, mm -hmm. you know, just yeah. a glossy new I mean, paint, is there, 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 there's, there must there's obvious reasons. Uh, that, that, well, there must be obvious reasons why they've done it in in their mind. Yeah. Um, I think we probably had a conversation a couple of times. Like, oh, what if we rebranded as something you know mm. totally different? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I can only put it down to the fact that there must be some sort of explanation um, yeah. mm -hmm. from their from their aspect to to have done that. Um, and yeah. Just, 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 later, yeah. yeah. Let's move on before. We get there. <laughs> <laughs> so going. Uh, my final question for you, I'm conscious we've had you for an hour already, oh, yeah, but yeah. there's now a lot of these conferences. Yeah, that, They're all brilliant. Like They've all got their strengths and weaknesses. We love going to them all because it means we get to chat to everyone and we get to build our relationships with you guys. And it's always, you know, whenever we're going around, it's always like, right, let's make sure we see KPM, let's make sure we see QuickBooks, let's make sure we go and see these guys, those guys, like Cresco. And like we try and make sure we check, touch base with like the, the smaller, the startup ones that we've seen coming through COVID yeah. and stuff as well. And but from a marketing, advertising, organisation point of view, which conference is the the most fun for you guys to be there? But also, which one, which one's doing you guys the most favours? Because next year, we a lot of accountants have got a really tough choice next year because they're not all in the same privileged position where we can pull out of our firms like. For the next nine weeks, I think I'm spending two full weeks in my firm. The rest of the time, I'm out and about 
road shows, on tour, speaking, we? accounting conferences, and on holiday. Not everyone gets to do that. Um, and we are forever grateful that we've got ourselves into that position. But next year, in March to April, we've got Digital Accounting Show, yeah. Accounting Web, Accountex. Like, there's going to be software vendors out there, especially the smaller ones, the new mm -hmm. ones, the startups, mm -hmm. that are going to be looking at going, well, that's not a small investment for any of them. Can we afford to do all of them? Which one should we do? Um, Can I take yeah, what you sorry. said earlier about... <laughs> <laughs> um, Aaron, um, I don't know. I think, look, a couple of them were forced upon us. Not going to lie. Yeah. Um, not naming names. I don't necessarily agree it's the right approach for... for so, yeah. Like, because you think they should be spread out throughout the oh, year. 100%. So everyone yeah. can attend as yeah, many yeah. of them as possible yeah. and it benefits everyone. Yeah. yeah. I think... To this start, race to be the first... Yeah. Well, I think AWeb Live, the first two years, I... Well, they've had it a challenging time. Yeah, they had it a challenging time in a challenging area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, it was um, a really, uh, as, as vendors and people who invested a lot of money for those shows, mm. we didn't really understand the logic, but we're kind of damned if we do, damned if we don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, in, in those scenarios. But I mean, what, unfortunately, we would have been like first to be... Why is KPM not there? What's going yeah. on? What's happening? What's, it, it, it's it, it's, it's seen, the part of the thing, isn't it? Yeah. Correct. And I think those two shows, they were live in Coventry, was where I think I really struggled because they were very head in the sand about the failure of it, mm -hmm. you know, and how and like, not well they do. Defence, the first one, COVID. COVID, it was the first mm -hmm. conference after COVID. Oh no, Daz, Daz was, wasn't it? The first conference. In July. It was like yeah. a day long event. Yeah. But it was the first big one. And the weekend before Omnicon gets announced, everyone suddenly gets nervous. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I always True. wrote that off as a charitable. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's not Bye. your fault. The next one still seemed very quiet. Back deadline day as well, wasn't it? From On a back deadline day. It was something, yeah. wasn't there? And also MTD, it so got cancelled. Like, yes. Back day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That conversation, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. And in Coventry, as you say, it's not the I just didn't get easiest the, place I just to get. Didn't get the logic behind it, and I think Tush said we weren't forced, but yeah, as it's going back with Dan, if we do Dan, if we don't, like I really do like going to digital accountancy show because I f I think that's a space where where accounting is going to go. You know, it's not just because you relive your IB for days <laughs> on that night out. <laughs> Look, we all were impressed. <laughs> we all were impressed massively. <laughs> About the light show <laughs> when we went there uh, this year, I think it was. Like, yeah. But I, I like what they, they have a clear message. Yeah. You know what they're, what they're trying a to distinctive deliver. Distinctive brand. Co correct. Distinctive audience. Yeah. You know, and I think that's good because Account X is Account X. You know, you know what you're getting it's on the tin. Beat. It's a You know, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. a like yeah. ten thousand people over two days is not a yeah. like. Hats off to Caroline and her team for achieving that because. That's not a small achievement to bring 10,000 accountants and software providers yeah, into yeah. a place over two days. That's incredible. I think if I ask a question differently, which one can't we afford to miss? Yes. It would be Account X yeah. in London. Right. That's one I think we have to go. Yeah. Like, because I think in every accountant's calendar, that is the main one where the biggest cross section of accountants will yeah. go. Maybe the others might grow, mm -hmm. but I think they're a few years behind that kind of the reach that show is that the one so if you if you were talking to a brand new startup software and they were saying look guys just give us a tip which one should we if we were to commit to one or none is it damaging not to go to a conference if you've not done any conferences before or could you get away with it nowadays or is it now an expected thing that software companies will be at these conferences if they want credibility and I visibility and if so, which one is, is it a Countex that they need to go to? Oh, okay. <laughs> I think the it's thing about hour, it is, but we've got deep. Yeah. <laughs> I think the thing about it is that you get different demographics yeah. at different shows. Like if you look at DAS, a lot of it is all to do with app stacks mm -hmm. and how you can connect, how it can connect into, you know, and we've had this conversation with Dan, um, you know, is great because I can connect this with that, et cetera, et cetera. And that's what, that's what it's about. 
accountants is like you know okay we're we're not the suit accountants anymore yeah but it's it's still it's attracting everybody you're getting yeah. the stack yeah, 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 yeah. you're Very getting the, the you know the traditional accountants etc that are turning up um to the show so I'm not sure, really. I'd probably say a Countex in my eyes because you're attracting a bigger demographic, a larger mm -hmm. demographic. And yeah. obviously the footfall itself, you're probably paying a bit more. I don't, yeah, yeah. you know, but at the end of the day, is it worthwhile? You, yeah. I guess, yeah. I, and, and there must be a crossover between a Countex and digital accounting shows anyway, or, or any of Yeah, the there will be right? like, yeah. I think it, what about from the point of view of, does a, if you guys would come into the market now with your product and you've not done any conferences before, is it a worthwhile investment for you to do it? Or three. Or any of them? Or, or, any like, of them. or do you go, actually, you know what, guys, for the amount of money we spend on this stuff, yeah, we'd rather spend it on the product at this early stage as a new startup? Yeah, so you guys have grown past this point. Uh, I think we saw some new that? people at the at Accountex. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 when, I, when I did do a round uh, a few times, like, you did see new vendors yeah, that yeah, were yeah. there. What do you think? I, I'm not sure. I think I'd rather spend it necessarily on actually building a digital marketing aspect um, mm -hmm. going forward. Yes and no. Like we still get people who come up to us and be like, "I've never heard of you before." Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And so yeah. we, what these shows do give is exposure to some people who we don't reach. Yep. Um, you know, and the context and the other shows become a focal point. You know, because. We've always held our kind of meetings with our prospective clients over Google Hangouts. Mm, yeah. Google Hangouts combined too, I think, um, digitally. So by meeting your customers face-to-face -face or prospects face-to-face, -face, it just becomes a, an event in the calendar. But going back to your original question, now I think because there's so many, it really depends on what your product is and what kind of audience you want to attract. Because I think if you want to be seen as being tech savvy, um, you know, a solution for an accountant who has tech at the heart of their accountancy firm, you probably focus on digital accountancy show. Mm -hmm. Cause that is more of your maybe ideal customer. Whereas Accountex, it could, but then it could be diluted. But then let's say if I'm a, a, a zero marketplace app, for example, it, it makes sense for me to be at zero coin. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 very for true. Example. Very true. So but is that much more of a closed shop though? Is that more difficult? Would you say to get into? Potentially, uh, oh, we don't know. We're, we're not trying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you know, to get into the marketplace itself, you, you yeah, yeah, yeah. quite a lot of compliance work and and, yeah. and what have you. But if you're in, all of a sudden that opens up a different aspect. So if you'd ask that question, Johan, would I be at a show, including ZeroCon or QuickBooks? You know, for for example, maybe potentially I'd consider that because actually I'm a stack that somebody yeah. needs to be mm. seeing in first and foremost. Yeah. So my final question is, we've, we've established that going to these events seems like the right thing to do. It seems like we're on the same yep. path there. Which one is debatable? Would you ever hold back a release or hold back a feature or keep something to one side to then announce and launch at these events? Or is it just get it out there as soon as possible and hope for the best? Um, if I would be lying if I said our product team aren't jumping up and down at the moment to get charities released in time for a Countex. A Countex? Yeah. 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 But, but I, th I think it's good to have these you events. Think in having the that product up. launch in line with a conference, does it get more conversations about you and more traction on the day? Or I mean, it gives us something to talk about. Gives us we do talk. appreciate yeah. if you can. That That is great. <laughs> That's always enough consideration. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's also, I think, in, to be in a marketplace, I think it's always good for your customers and people maybe looking at you, know that you're coming to the table with something new. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're your product, you've got to constantly seem to be innovating and evolving. So it is important. And they are landmarks in our calendars that, you know, they're cracked a whip, but we push our team harder to make sure that those things that are maybe have been planned that we want to get there mm -hmm. and we want to showcase. They might not be finished, but we want to showcase yeah. because we can see, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, 500 people a day in account X, 1,000 over two days. And that level of visibility to your products is second to none. Yeah. You know, so if you, are, if you do want to showcase something, then those are the places to do so. 
Depends on the feature as well, right? We're probably victims of our own doing, really, because sometimes, let's say you've done the AML stuff, right, on the PM. We've not really shouted about that. We're, we're talking about account text next week. You're just assuming that you are just going to slip that in. We've just, because it, it, it's not really been spoken about, but at the same time, the charity aspect, yeah, we're jumping up and down about it as so, well. I suppose right? that's an opportunity for another plug. Yeah, 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 carry on, carry on. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> I've got you, Tush. Um, <laughs> we're changing. Well, you some, keep him around. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, we're changing some stuff in our practice management module because AML is just getting hotter and hotter yeah. and hotter. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we just noticed some gaps that we believe is becoming just really important for accountants. So soon you'll be able to do a risk assessment in KPM where you can allocate yeah. risk levels you know, produce a document, allocate an AML officer. Um, at the moment, we also just have an AML ID check. We're expanding that to a company check, credit check, international ID Love it. check. Yeah, yeah. Again, they're maybe trying to be that ecosystem, mm -hmm. but essentially being like, we don't want our accountants to worry about, okay, my governing body is saying I need to do this, this, this. I yeah. need to get another software. That, again, undermines our US, what we yeah. stand for. So... Hopefully, um, not for account next, I don't think, but maybe towards the end of this month, early next, then that's when those AML changes will start rolling out and up and up. There's too many other exciting things going on. They get Love lost it. in the background. Just one more point on the conferences then. Would it work? We're just putting pie in the sky. At the moment, you guys are given the opportunity, or at least you can fight for the opportunity to go on stage and do thought leading and everything else. Is there a space in our industry now, the way that we're going, the hype we get for new features, the, because I mean, we've built a whole podcast over it, right? And, and there is definitely an appetite for something new and I'm talking about it. Is there, would there be room going forward in these conferences for a, an opportunity for you to just showcase new products? Like vendors get an opportunity to go on and say, right, this is KPM's time. They're going to talk about their new features and boom, here's here's the new features. And I think they started is, to do that. Okay, that okay. Well, I'm not sure. Didn't I see it at the Countex that didn't, well, uh, one of the vendors, I think, I'm sure TaxCalc had a, um, uh, a slot, didn't they? Or within their own Was that within section. their own? Okay. Um, and maybe they're in their own section and maybe there's a different time that you want yeah. people to, that, that could actually, quite work right you're walking around the thing for this time great idea i mean cost dependent yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. sure didn't pay enough yeah yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. You could, but, but no i agree like if these are events in which the you know leaders in the, the product space are coming to showcase their products i think maybe having a dedicated stage in which you can show what you've done in the past spotlight stage yeah whatever, yeah correct could be very insightful it's you like know a, it's like a pitch um yeah you've got your Sort of like five minute pitch. Uh, Save our feet. Refreshing. We could just set up camp at that stage. Yeah. And exactly. Record for the whole day and then not have to yeah. worry about knackering yeah, yeah, our feet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions? No, you carry on. Wonderful. All right. So, first, I mean, you've already done a cracking job, but this is your chance to plug. So, please plug, plug, plug. Like, where do people find you? What social elements do you want people to follow you on? What they should be excited about? This, I mean, Accountants will be got, been, been and gone, unfortunately, by the time this goes out. But yeah. talk, plug away. This is your moment. You you plug. I mean, if I was doing it on parts, it's that camera, that camera, <laughs> if you've ever seen it. <laughs> firstly, you can obviously reach us through our normal channels. So um, our telephone number is www.kpm.com, for example, C-A-P-I-U-M, that is. Um, uh, other ways you can find me on LinkedIn, um, my email address as well. The guys can give that out, um, to share.patel at kpm.com. Likewise for yourself. Um, yeah, for what's exciting about KPM is, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, we've gone through the hard, like we've churned the milk and, you know, now it's turning into butter mm -hmm. and I really believe and some of the customers are starting to see what our vision really is. Um, you know, and that is with the release of, you know, charity accounts with time and fees, but also being able to deploy new features like the AML compliance tools. Um, you know, we're getting a lot better at streamlining our product delivery. Our support has gone on leaps and bounds. You know, we've got a customer success onboarding team where you get your own dedicated account manager who 
should handhold you through, you know, your initial uh, periods of using KPM. So, you know, I think some of the legacy vendors, what they forget is the human element. Yeah. You yeah. know, we've got the product, but I know Johan or Aaron could contact me and I'll pick up the phone within an hour <laughs> and talk to them. So not only do we have the product behind it, but we have the people in front of it. So check us out. There's a whole new roadmap coming out. So obviously you're more than happy to share that with you um, and um, discuss that more in detail as well. Amazing, amazing. Well, that's it. Well, thank you both of you for coming along. I love the fact that two for the price of one. I think yep. that's a bargain. We're talking about value today. That's a, that's a perfect value. So again, thank you so much for giving up your time. Thank you for being here. Um, and we're going to have to have you on at some point, right? Like, yep. Yeah, coming back on and hopefully with some more features that we can you can earmark and go from there. And that is it. That is the end of Ask the Accountant. We have cool friends, plural, on this one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff as you're already doing. Don't forget to follow us and go from there. And we will be with you with a brand new We Have Cool Friends very soon. Bye for now. <laughs>